A lot of you delay retirement because you don't know what you should be doing. And this isn't about having a retirement plan. This is about giving your notice, everything around HR, your pension, your benefits, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna kind of give you seven tips in this video to walk you through this process so that you don't delay retirement because you don't have these answers. So the first thing you need to do if you're thinking about giving notice is look at your employment contract. Within your employment contract, there may be a requirement to give a certain amount of notice. Now this could be a set 30, 60, 90 days, maybe even only two weeks, or it may be based on how many years you've worked at your employer. Again, you might be more of a contract style where you're there for a year or two or three years. You can't give a 30 day notice if your employment contract says you have to give a 90 day notice. I've had this in the past. Uh, where I've switched kind of back-end jobs for our mutual fund dealer many years ago, and I gave a 30-day notice, and they charged me for 90 days because that's what my contract said. Again, that was my error. I don't want you to make that same mistake. So make sure you understand what your employment contract says and if there's any requirement as far as timeline goes from your end. The next thing you wanna do is have a discussion or a meeting with your manager or supervisor. And this could be anywhere from a couple months to a year beforehand. It depends what type of position and job you have. If you have a very high level job, it's going to be hard to replace. The company that you respect and have worked for a long time, the more heads up that you give, the better off it's going to be. It's going to be a smoother transition. They can find the right person. You can train them up. It's going to be much easier. I've had some clients retire on a short notice from a high level position and all that has done is create an issue for them because the company kind of keeps leeching back to them saying, hey, what about this? What about that? And you know, he can't really get out of the situation as much as he is retired. So the more time you give, if it's a good company that you've worked with for a long time and you respect and you know that they'll honor that decision, then it's going to make your life simpler when you hit retirement. You kind of hand off the, the baton a bit smoother and make sure that you don't get kind of looped back on once you hit retirement. After you've had that discussion with your manager or supervisor, you want to be giving written notice. And again, this is going to tie into your employment contract on how much time you have to give. Is there any requirements there? But you want to give some sort of written notice to them with a heads up of, hey, I'm going to be gone on you know September 1st, 2023, whatever it is. A lot of people I talked to, I just talked to a client yesterday, uh, retiring at the end of the summer, and he's been there for many years. And I said, oh, are you giving like a one or two month notice? He goes, don't, two weeks, that's all I have to give. And fortunately he has a position that will be filled somewhat easily, but again, two weeks isn't a lot of time for that employer. So I know a lot of you don't like your job and you're gonna give the shortest amount of notice and that's fine. Like if your job hasn't treated you well, uh, if your manager sucks, all of that, I get it. But if you have the respect, if, if it's, you know, you work at a good place, I really do encourage you to give a little bit more heads up, more notice. So that is just a smoother transition for everyone around you. Look, if you like your coworkers, this is something you wanna do. You wanna help them out. You don't wanna leave them in the hole. You don't wanna kinda of leave the company on a bad term. And giving two weeks notice for retirement could be that. So maybe try and bump it back up to four, six, or eight weeks. The next thing is to communicate with HR. And I wanna spend some time on this one because there's a few layers to it. The first thing is, if you have a pension plan or a group RSP or some sort of retirement savings, you need to understand, and hopefully you do this long before you retire, but you need to understand how that investment account works. It's a, if it's a defined benefit plan, what are your options? You know, it might be different at different ages, at the end of the year versus beginning of the year. There's a lot of things that go into that. So make sure you have a good grasp of your defined benefit plan. Maybe it's a group RSP, a defined contribution plan, stock option plan. There's a million different options out there. So whatever you have, make sure you understand that okay, how does this work when I retire? What are my options? Do I have to leave it there? Can I take the pension versus commutative value? Maybe there's a top up at a certain point in the year, so you wanna to stay to that point, and that goes around timing of retirement. I'll give you an example right now that we're working through with a the client. They just um, left their job, so they retired at the end of in May, and they are taking the commutative value of their pension. Now, they have to give the decision in Q3 of this year in a few months. So they're going to get paid out in 2023, this year. The problem is they're gonna get paid their community value, which there's a large cash portion to it. Then they're gonna get you know, a, a severance or, or a termination package as well. And then they had their employment for a few months. And at the end of the day, they have a lot of income coming in, which means they're gonna have a big tax bill. So if they had bumped this later in the year, 
they could maybe bump their commutative value of the pension to 2024 and spread out that tax bill. So when you're talking about, you know, is there a better time to retire or not? There is for a lot of you. If you get performance bonuses at certain points in the year, you might want to hang around until you get that performance bonus before you move on. It might be based on an age. If you hit age, you know, 55, you get benefits for the rest of your life. Well, you're going to want to wait till your 55th birthday if you can. So this is where you need to kind of meet with your HR person and make sure that you understand, you know, is there trigger points that are going to be better or worse? We've seen some clients retire at bad times, like literally a few months later would have been drastically different. You know, tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxes for one of our clients. I will say this, typically we would recommend that you retire either in the first few months of the year or in the last few months of the year. And the reason for that is again, typically if you are getting paid out more of a lump sum, maybe a termination package or anything like that, if you retire near the end of the year, most typically you can get that payment bumped to the beginning of next year. So you spread out that tax bill or you wait and you retire in the early part of the following year. So you don't have a lot of employment income and then you're getting that settlement package. Now, if you're someone that has no termination package, no commuted value, there's no like lump sums when you retire, which is a large portion of you, then the timing is less you know, impactful, so to speak. When you look at health and dental, typically when you leave a plan, your health and dental, if you have it at work, is going to be done, it's terminated. But maybe, possibly, you can carry on with it. And so you wanna to talk to your HR, see what are my options, what are the costs of that, and then do a cost analysis. One of the questions I get asked a lot is, Adam, what do I do with health and dental when I retire? And we've done a few videos on this, but I'll touch on it lately here in that Blue Cross, Manual Life, they have these like follow me or, or continuous coverage plans. Meaning that when you leave your work, as long as you apply within typically 60 or 90 days, you can continue with coverage without any medical underwriting. So if you're on any medication, that may be a good solution for you. But I always say, look at the price you're going to pay, your premiums for that policy, and then run through a typical year. How much are you actually going to claim? And is there a net benefit to you over the policy and the claim period? I will say this, most people that we work with and that we talk to and kind of go through planning with, most of them, if they don't have a health and dental plan that will continue through retirement, they typically pay cash for this type of thing. The next tip is to plan for a smooth transition. And this comes into two things. A, giving enough notice that they can replace your job, you can train them up and you can kind of hand it off smoothly. The second thing is you may have worked at a company for a long time or you have a lot of knowledge in what you do and no one else has that knowledge. I have a client right now that is exactly that. Like when he retires at the end of this year, the company he works for will probably go bankrupt and they have a lot of employees, but he knows they're, they're key an employee and they haven't done any work to replace them. And it's detrimental to the company. He's worked as hard as he can to help them out. They've been kind of, you know, pushing against it and they're gonna be in a tough position. So try and hand stuff off. If you're kind of that key person in the company, you wanna make sure that you find someone else to take over that knowledge base. It's impossible to pass everything in your head over to that person, I get that, but, pass as much as you can. So again, it's a smooth transition for the company, for you and whoever walks into your position going forward. The next thing would be timing. And I talked about this a lot already as far as you know, end of year, beginning of year, you wanna look at, is there a better timing position on retirement? Are there things that are going to be impactful for me termination agreements, you know, retirement allowances, maybe getting paid for, you know, sick time or whatever it is, that lump sum payment could be impactful on a tax wise. So you want to make sure that you understand when that's going to be paid out, how much other income you have, how this all comes together. And again, this ties into the last one, which is to seek professional advice to get a financial plan. So talk to your financial planner, hire a firm like ours, where we can help you build a plan, walk you through this process before you retire so that we can give advice around, look, you might want to wait a few more months. That'll push your, you know, $100,000 termination package into next year. It's going to reduce your tax bill by $15,000, $20,000. There's a lot of benefit there. So it's not just, you know, where's my income coming from going forward and CPP time and all this kind of stuff. It could be around termination and when's the best time to hand in your termination letter. So don't take retirement lightly. There's a lot of decisions that need to be kind of encompassed and wrapped into what you're doing. So again, a lot of you, you're gonna live two weeks notice, you hate your work, that's fine. But if you are a key person in your company, you enjoy working there, you love your employees, you wanna give a bit more notice. So hopefully these tips help you out. We'll see you in the next video.